Happy Monday, everybody. Happy March. Yeah, snuck up on you. Got yeah. you. Got you when you weren't expecting it. Yeah. Dang it. Like last week, we're all like, oh, man, we don't start our next production bubble till like psh, March 4th, which I think is forever from now. And then I wake up the next day and it's like, oh, no, it's ah, dang it. Yeah. Hello, everybody. We're back with some more weird things here in just a minute. How you doing, Andrew? Good. 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 Oh, those that's, <laughs> that's the shifty look of a top five New York Times bestseller. Uh, Wall Street Journal. Come Wall on. Street the Jour- non-rigged one. The Damn non-rigged it. one. Hey, by the way, and talk about four, non- non-rigged four. Wall Street Journal. Um, uh, uh, guess who, like an hour ago, was about to subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Big old fat thing, $4 a month. Great, 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 great. Mm-hmm. Page four out of four after the credit card information never read the fine print kind of scroll on down look a little bit of that fine print and they're like yeah four dollars for, for the, the first digital year. version for the first year then it's forty dollars <clears throat> per yeah. month and i'm just like uh oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you you sneaky snake well, what are you up to and then i i realized um uh guess who's gonna generate a one-time use privacy card thanks to our friends over at privacy.com slash modern rogue always uh, <laughs> and then uh uh <laughs> and guess what it'll be limited to only four dollars per month and then they're gonna have a real hard time when they try to figure out how to squeeze forty dollars out of a four ounce stone man like those like sneaky sort of charges that go up like i have a stamps.com account which I hardly ever use. And then I get like, oh, here's your $18 charge this month, you know, for your thing you didn't use. And I'm like, oh, I'll cancel it eventually. Oh, I'll can, I don't. And then finally. So, hmm. um, yeah. I find that having your credit card stolen really helps with that because you just every few months have to, you know, say sorry to everyone. <laughs> and then, uh, and then you just buy, um, it, it's actually shockingly close to what I advise people to do for their over-the-top streaming services is just just cancel everything, and then the moment you want something, buy it. And then the moment you think you're buying it too much, then subscribe for a service, but do it with a card that nukes itself after three months or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to cancel my stamps.com right now, and they're like, oh, we'll call us. Let us call you. We'll call you. Uh, uh-huh. uh-huh. Um, so let's see what happens. For if anybody I... that's audio only, I just gave a very radio unfriendly gesture. <laughs> uh, I, uh, uh, they, they did, they were doing the Apple TV promotion with the iPhones, uh, where you get a year, but that promotion really only lasted a year. Um, and so at some point that promotion turned into buy a new iPhone and we'll give you Apple arcade for a few months. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Turns out there's a free basic plan ah. that they don't announce. Oh. Ah. Mm, that's interesting. Sorry, didn't interrupt you, Bryce. But uh, like, I figured, like, oh, mm. I have a feeling there's probably don't go. <laughs> but I went, but I, because I was on, I've been on the bubble about Apple Arcade and I was looking to go turn it off. And it was like, well, you have Apple Arcade until February something. Um, and so I said, all right, cool. Uh, and then I've just gotten charged for another month of Apple Arcade. <laughs> so I need to go in and get that. That's how they get you, man. They, that's how they get you. Here's 
like my issue with Apple Arcade is like I think it's sort of a great idea, but the idea that the pipeline of content would continue to be really good. I was wondering, and I go look at Apple Arcade now, and I'm still seeing a lot of their launch titles. Well, I, yeah, I, they... I, th I think the business plan was always get a bunch of stuff that's good enough that nobody wants to quite let go of it, and don't let people figure out that they're they never really owned the game; they've only been renting it, and then put them in the position where the only way to stop paying is to give up access to the game. Yeah, which I did happily. And I, I think that's why their growth for Arcade hasn't been what they've wanted because Netflix spends a ton of money on content. And Netflix is like, we got to keep you coming in because right. eventually people will go, oh, I just paid. Yeah, maybe I don't want it. You know, and I think. But, and I, I think they're also probably being hurt by the kind of drought of game development right now, where just COVID has caused a bunch of stuff to get delayed and stuff. And so a lot of the things that Apple Arcade got was like, hey, Let's get the mobile port of your game before you put it on Steam in a couple of months and don't put it on Android is, is how a lot of those deals have shaken out. Um, but eh, I don't know. I think there are some good games on there, but some of them are just like not even good to play on the phone. I don't know. It's not the great, the best format for all those games. Yeah. What, what's the easiest way for me to find out what I'm still subscribed to on Apple stuff? I would say go to the App Store and check out your profile. There's a subscription button there. But yeah, they actually make it pretty pretty easy. Right. Like, if, if you are subscribing through Apple, you can cancel stuff, like, very, very simply through their portal. Mm -hmm. um, subscriptions. Oh, they do have a, they do have a top-level tab. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, they got better. Let's see. Turns out I am active on Apple Arcade, Animal Jam, Satellite Tracker, HBO Max, and Moshi Premium, Picture This, Plant Identifier, Pandora, Apple TV Plus, <laughs> Bookful, and Headspace. That's a lot of subscriptions. That sounds some of those sound like kid stuff. Yeah, some of them do. Yeah. Uh man, I can't bring myself. It's it's been a minute since I've used Headspace, but that's one where it's like, I can't do that to Andy. I can't spread, oh. you know. <laughs> Pandora. Too important. I can't give that. Plant uh, identifier. Hmm. I'm going to say sorry to whoever got that one. Plant it's on identifier. You. Um, are we about ready to do a show? Yeah, hold on. Let me unsubscribe yeah. from HBO Max. Let's not, let's, let's not get in the weeds on uh, Plant uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. All right. You feeling it, Andrew? Yeah, but we won't know, Justin, if we're in the weeds or not now. <laughs> if I only know. we had a plant of identifier. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm just in this invasive species. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Now we're why, just in Brian, the unidentified why? tangles. <laughs> you cheap bastard. <laughs> it's like that moment that Rick says, I don't have room for all of my genius in your brain, so I'm gonna give up my my affinity for hats, my memory of blank, and all the improv workshops I took. <laughs> All right, Andrew, I'm going to count you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Justin Robert Young. Hello. And always saving the best for last, Mr. Bryce Castillo. Oh, hi, thank you. Mr. Marbles himself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Gentlemen, I want to introduce you to my little friend. Her name uh, is Elizabeth I... Ann. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, I don't know uh, if this is TOS appropriate. This is this is totally cool, and I want you to figure out what makes Elizabeth Ann special. Um, I'm gonna guess. It, it, is it too much of a leap too fast in this game to go straight to probably not a human being? Can I say probably not a human being? Okay. All right. So far, so good. He's on doing the nose, the nose yep. tap. He's Got it. Saying okay. It's on the nose, Justin. What's your guess? A uh, snake. <laughs> okay. First of all, solid. Like that's some good game theory <laughs> on weird yeah. things. I'm gonna take spiders. Gonna spiders. spiders. God damn, oh, damn it! Now. It's like eighty percent chance that I'm already screwed here. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> instead nope. of instead of diamond hands, it's like uh, I snake spiders to the uh, uh, to the bog. <laughs> to the bog. Uh, okay, so it's not human. 
Is it is it one of the Elizabeth Ann? Is it a, a Boston Dynamics like robot? Is it a dog? Oh, is that the name of the dogs? I, w- I was going to go a different direction and go bot, but more of a AI bot. Oh, chat bot then. Yeah. yeah. Nope. <gasps> is that is that Bigfoot's wife? Is that Miss Foot? Wait, hold on. Uh, first of all, it just occurred to me we never got an answer on either spiders or snakes. Oh, he said no. no. Can we, can we, nope, oh, okay, he all right. Good. No. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann. Elizabeth Ann, not a bot. It's kind of an old timey name, huh? Kind of the two first names sort of Wait thing. Wait a minute. Wait, uh, um, is it like an old school automaton from like a previous era? Nope. <sighs> is it. A uh, 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 a rare Fabergé egg. <laughs> no, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. So it's a rare thing. Okay. Um, is it a cloned animal? Is it one of those names for like cloned animals? Like, uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, I know eyes. that smile. Oh, I know. I know that those eyes are darting like he's a lawyer <laughs> pretending not to be a cat. I know what I'm seeing right now. Uh, uh, yes, exactly, Bryce. <gasps> oh! uh, well done. Oh, wow. Now I'm sending you, but we got to guess what and what makes this special. Well, we know that that Dolly the sheep was uh, uh, probably of all time the most famous clone creature that I th- could think of by name, and I know that that it was the beginning of. Um, and and we'll, we'll do a quick science side jag, and you can tell me. We'll play a game called uh, Andrew Tells Brian Whether or Not He Remembers the Headlines Correctly. Uh, Dolly the Sheep, if I remember correctly, was the first time to take an adult nucleus uh, uh, filled with DNA and implant it in embryonic cells. Um, and the problem with that process is you get a lot of deformed, non-viable beings. But if I remember correctly, those that do make it and turn out not to be sterile, their offspring is, for lack of, uh, the only thing I could think of is what Stephen King called it in The the, the Wastelands, uh, or, or um, Wizard in Glass, he called it threaded stock. So weirdly, I remember an article 15, 18 years ago in Wired Magazine, and the headline was just straight up, you have almost certainly eaten cloned beef. And I was like, what? And it goes on to explain that, that it's a messy process, but if you get a viable clone of an offspring, then their offspring are apparently perfectly fine to eat, and you almost certainly have eaten cloned offspring from clone. Uh, am, am I right well, so far? Yeah, and so one of the ways that cloning gets messy is that, you know, we're taught, like, DNA, DNA, these these four base pairs are what control everything, right? Not quite fully true. Nature is very efficient. And nature says, ah, DNA, perfect. And I'm going to put this into another, you know, another cell and it's going to split and multiply. It's like, oh, wait, I've got a patch update. Uh, I can't put it in the DNA. What do I do? Well, we'll put some proteins on the surface of the DNA, on the outer edge of the DNA. It'll have some extra code. We'll rarely ever use this. It won't be a big deal. It's just a little update to the organism. You can still maybe grow the organism with the DNA, but the really the, the latest patches are there. Well, over time, it's called methylation, right? So methylation is the addition of proteins on the ex, uh, hanging off of the edge of the DNA. What's happened over time is uh, some organisms have more methylation than others. And that's why when you'll see Sometimes that clone cow that's like just super ginormous and huge. Oh yeah, it looks like looks, looks like he's been all roided up and is about to take yeah. on a Terminator from the future. Because of the methylation, no, he, he would and be that's... this Terminator from the future. Yeah, yeah, and with with uh, humans, um, that's the sort of thing too. Is that like uh, I think we have a lot of methylation, which makes it difficult as uh, far as cloning. But before we get too far too fast, just just so I have the right picture in my mind. What I'm imagining based on what you say is if you have all these hanger on proteins, then um, during the DNA duplication, the split, then that's sort of when the, the, the right coding process weaves its way into the split. Is that, is that, is that how it happens? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, uh, man, seventh grade life science. Well, there's <clears throat> probably <clears throat> another process within the cell that is able to take advantage of some of the methylation. So methylation doesn't necessarily replicate itself the same way of just splitting the DNA and recombining it to this. Okay. 
but 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 in general, methylation is the addition of outside proteins that become integrated into the the yeah. the, the, the reduplication of, of yeah, DNA. Yeah, the, the 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 Wikipedia explanation: DNA methylation is a biologic process by which methyl groups are added to the DNA molecule. Methylation can change the activity of a DNA segment without changing the sequence. Got it. Mm. Got it. Uh. We gotta see Elizabeth Ann though. You, oh, okay. I have to show okay. you Elizabeth okay. Ann because okay. I found uh, her. Wait, wait, wait! Don't show! Don't we won't show do it yet. yet. But what what makes so cloned animal? What makes her special? Um. Hmm. Okay. So when I think of cloned or even genetically modified anything, I I think of uh, whoopsie doodle errors that belong in a Cronenberg film. I think of um for some reason. Uh, because it's a good marker, just add it like glowing cats, like adding jellyfish g- DNA glowing uh, or 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 fluorescing stuff to find out whether or not stuff worked. Um, and I um, is it is it a primate? Oh my god, is it a primate? No. Oh, I don't know why that felt good, but. You really wanted it to not be a primate. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> because uh, wait, it's not wait, it's not a human, is it? <gasps> is it a human? Because I know China, they they do weird stuff. Traditional Chinese name, Elizabeth Ann. No, not not. I mean that, that would be that would be just how China would get you. They, 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 I think they, after they, the trouble of the CRISPR babies from what last year or two years well, ago. But that's what I was thinking, is like she might have been a CRISPR baby. Uh, mm. Justin, what do you think? Type of animal. Oh, I, I, I don't know. It was, it was half an egg, half, half, half an egg. Is, Somebody made an egg out of a salamander. It's going crazy. Wait a minute. Is Elizabeth? All right. One more question. In the spirit of yes/no, um, is Elizabeth Ann an anagram for anything? Because boy, does that mm. sm- sound like it's a sneaky anagram for like lizard something. Oh my God! Is it a lizard? <laughs> No. Oh. And I don't know if it's an anagram for anything. Okay. All right. I don't I don't think it is. All right. Let's uh cut to the chase. Let's everybody take a look at Elizabeth Ann. The first uh cloned endangered species, a black footed ferret. Look at her. Aww. From North America. Aww. North America. Aww. Look at that. She's so sweet. She's like clone little ferret. Uh what does it say? Forty seven days old or so. Uh this looks great. Also, uh I called it Elizabeth Ann is an anagram for a blaze in then, which I think we were all thinking of. Of course. <laughs> sure, yeah. Or sorry, a blaze hen knit. Born on December 10th, 2020, Elizabeth Ann is the genetic twin of a black footed ferret named Willa who died in 1988. <gasps> oh, the Wyoming Jesus. Game and uh-huh. Fish Department preserved Willa's cells at San Diego Zoo's Global's Frozen Zoo, where they were stored in a cryobank for decades. And you're sure you're certain it's not an anagram for bathe nails in. <laughs> uh, that's that's Could crazy. Be. So so, what was the was the initial purpose of storing all these cells for cloning back in the in 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 the late eighties? I I would imagine that I I I I certainly know that that plant samples were kept ju- just on principle. You know what, hundreds of years ago, where it's just like, well, this is gone. Seems like we should hold on to a piece of it. Yeah, so they started 40 years ago. They started preserving DNA samples, and the, the black-footed ferret apparently was, in, was threatened, and they thought it went extinct. And then, like, 1980, they found, like, a family of black-footed ferrets on a ranch, so they got some DNA samples and preserved it. So this is, you know, you know, one of the ways in which we're able to bring this back is— I mean, I think this animal had still, because they found out— it, wasn't extinct i'm not sure who the mother was but uh you know kind of fascinating uh you know what actually now that i look at it there's kind of like a a big almost like she's wearing a mask which makes sense because Uh. there's an anagram for bane haze lint which i think is what they were going for you're you're, this this lint you will give up your life (laughs) your bane haze lint (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, that's, that's crazy, man. So, uh, 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 is there any word on the, is, is there any knowledge I should be updating in this, in this ramshackle catastrophe I call a brain 
about like the general method of cloning? Is it still grab some adult DNA, squeeze it into an embryo and, and hope it takes or, or is there uh, classier ways? I mean, there, I mean, the, 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 as far as, I mean, your, your, where your DNA comes from, whatever, I don't know kind of the latest as far as, uh, the specifics of how I know we're getting a lot more precise in what we're able to do, which is good. And like we've talked before now with, with things like CRISPR and Cas9, these methods are, you know, can help us be a little more precise in what we're able to do. But as far as the methods themselves, like I said, the, the methylation, by the way, it's not proteins, it's methyl groups. And I apologize to the two people up there that were writing angry letters. Uh, it's, you know, we're going to need to advance some of our technology to get even further along like that, being able to look at that extra information on the surface of DNA is there still, we, we think we have, ah, oh, we have this perfect process. It's this strand, this double helix, this, this almost platonic solid. And it's like, well, yeah, but nature, nature doesn't like symmetry and beauty the way we do. And it's like, ah, oh, I'm going to throw some extra data on here. Like, well, how will we clone? I don't know. Not my problem. I have a billion years to figure this out. <laughs> there awesome. is. And so it's cool though. At the same time, this story came up was, we found the uh, another example of really, really old DNA. This was Siberian. Uh, this was this week. We've been able to retract the oldest DNA ever recovered was from a one million year old from its teeth. Sorry, a one million year old what? Mammoth. Oh my gosh. What's significant about this is we've talked about before is there are studies that talked about the half-life of DNA, the idea that DNA deteriorates over time and that you are never going to get DNA more than a few hundred thousand years old. You know, we've been able to sequence things from Neanderthals and other, some of our ancestors and some adjacent species, but there have been people who said like, hey, no, you're not going to be able to go beyond this. And we said here on this very podcast, there's always going to be a but. You're going to find out that, yes, this may be true, in normal conditions, but there's always going to be extenuating conditions. We've we've have evidence that if you have the presence of iron, that DNA may form kind of like cluster around iron, and we may have much older. We have evidence of really, really like tens of millions of year old DNA fragments. And in this case, they found like the DNA inside of a tooth, inside of a mammoth that was frozen in permafrost. And they'd be like, well, yeah, of course, in those conditions, DNA like well, so yeah, so DNA well, can be billions of years old. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was. Uh just recently oh i would be a better person if I, I i know i i do remember it was on the economist um there was uh somebody talking about um uh yes technically you can't just dip a microphone into the water and just magically know the shape of all the earth underneath however what you can do is you can listen for primary sounds like for example whale song whale songs are yelling at whales so the first thing you hear is the whale yelling but then you're going to get to hear echoes. And as, and as a certain um, a, a, a thriller novelist wrote about, you can take those echoes and get a general shape of the ground or, or of the room from which it came. And so the, the Economist story was about the fact that uh, uh, somebody was able to uh, essentially use uh, whale song as a proxy uh, 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 ping, sonar ping, to, hmm. to get the shape of, of the, uh, the ground beneath. There's, yeah, there's a lot of different ways in which you can reconstruct. If you have some form of information, something that's there, and there's there's really cool papers talking about how uh, being able to know what's on the other side of inside of a room by looking at just the way certain light bounces around. There's a lot of really cl clever, uh, incredible ways in which you can reconstruct things which you wouldn't think there was any information. But sometimes the noise isn't really noise. Sometimes the noise is interference and you separate that out, you've got signal. Well, and, but, and, you know, uh, 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 just to double down on that idea, you know what it reminds me of is, let, let's take it for granted that people say like DNA can only last so long. And then after that, there's no way to, to preserve that information. Um, uh, entropy reigns supreme and you lose the, the thing. However, uh, I remember as, as, as a kid doing so many of those, um, those logic squares where, yes, you never knew for sure who the killer was, but you were able to effectively limit or eliminate like, well, it couldn't have been because this is the half wife of the person who was upside down and driving a car and and this person's blood type wouldn't boy and eventually you're left it kind of like a sudoku puzzle you're left with 
uh, after eliminating all the, you know, uh, possible, whatever, the Sherlock Holmes quote, you're, you're left with, well, it must be this. I could totally see a lot of markers that you don't currently associate with actual DNA information preservation basically being sort of the, um, uh, 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 the parody bits for all of those things so that, that you end up, uh, you end up, uh, it, well, like we, we can't say for sure it was that, but we know for sure it can't be anything other than that. Yeah. Which there's problems with that, which it, it assumes, you know, all the variables, but, uh, it's still, I don't know. I, I, well, and, I, and also keep, keep in mind, I'm, I'm banking on future people knowing more than us. And, uh, and, and at some point, God, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, who knows, man? We, 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 like the like blipverts may come out and our brains all get fried. That was a deep cut. <laughs> there you go, Max Headroom reference. Thank everybody. you. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was trying to find that. I was that. trying to find that show online, by the way. <laughs> uh, Manda pays. Uh, so yeah, and th there and th there's like really good research into DNA Half Life that shows like, hey, under the conditions we've met, it breaks down. And I'm not trying to like, oh those meanies trying to take away our dinosaurs like it's legit but it is that there's always these other mitigating factors like well there might be some something in the environment that can preserve it whatever and what we understand now like, like michael Crichton talked about even way back in jurassic park like because if you have a lot of little fragments you can overlap them and you can put together a bigger sequence and we can do things you could do really cool things with artificial intelligence where you could build a system and give it the morphology. You can give the morphology of a dinosaur and some evidence of like this is we know they're related to birds because morphology alone, like you could get, you could get a timber wolf or you could get a Tasmanian wolf, which is a marsupial and completely unrelated species. So morphology alone isn't enough. Well, if you look at the teeth, it's different. But I digress. Point is, you could take the morphology of an organism, like the shape, the bones, or what we know. And then say, we know it's kind of like this bird here, and here's some other bits of DNA. And you might be able to use AI to say, create a DNA strand that would make a thing like this. Right. Huh. And then if you ever got fragments, say, like, did that show up? Did that show up there? Or well, it, it, uh, wow. uh, two, two thoughts popped to mind, one of which is you mentioned Michael Crichton. I believe, if I remember correctly, in Jurassic Park, um, it is discussed about how the actual dinosaurs they were creating were fast moving warm blooded creatures and that didn't that didn't match the public perceptions of slow moving cold blooded creatures mm -hmm. and there was discussion about like well do we want to give people the dinosaurs they expect or the dinosaurs as they were so so certainly i agree i think i think we'll we'll sort of have the question like hey man you want to make a critter how do you want it to be uh, uh, uh what what version of it and likewise um i i won't say which show for fear of spoilers, but let's just say Bryce hates it. Um, the, uh, <laughs> there was a, there was a there was a discussion about like we could create a simulation of a thing, and yes, maybe the eye wrinkles are different in version prime versus beta versus zeta or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the general thing is what you think it is, and and the question is how how close to like number one what is real and then and then uh, uh, is that necessarily what you want what what is also interesting is okay so the idea of we give an ai what a a, a, a determined goal of what we would want an organism to look like mm -hmm. and it begins to to create dna sequences i mean at that point it is like a a a life simulation right at that i think if you hit that point i i, I don't know what else what else is left to conquer in terms of making like a full universal simulation? Well, and th th this is back to uh, that certain sci-fi series question of like, um, for example, we're really good at upscaling. Uh, recently, I think somebody upscaled the uh, the, the the Rickroll video. The uh, never going to give you yeah, up. exactly uh, uh, upscaled it uh, both in resolution and in um, frame rate. Um, and yeah, I believe that's pretty much what it looked like. Whether or not it's exactly right for the interpolated pixels in between number one uh, do we care number two um uh who knows and and when it comes to like if you get to the point where you're bringing where you're bringing a life form back uh i i suppose you would bring back enough and you would maybe do kind of like a uh, the a genetic equivalent of a fingerprint check and as long as they both pretty much checked out you could shrug and say 
yeah, that's pretty much that species because there's a lot of, oh my God, it's so creepy to look at. At the at the at the high frame rate, yeah. uh, I I don't know how much of it is the high frame rate or the resolution. There's, uh, you know, and one of the things too is like if you were to bring back the dinosaurs, if you were trying to bring back a dinosaur, which I'm all aboard, I think it's a, a great plan. Nothing could go wrong. Um, <laughs> is Just keep that, them dependent on lysine, you'll be fine. Yeah, is that you have the you'd have to change it. You'd have to like because you know dinosaurs when they live, they're more oxygen in the environment. And so you would need to be able to adapt it to be able to fit. So you'd have to make modifications to bring that back. And if you were to bring back uh, other animals too, like there's a thing to think about is like, like Richard Dawkins posed the question, like if we could bring back, I think he said like Lucy, like if we could clone Lucy, you know, which you know, maybe one of our ancestors, which is, you know, kind of halfway between us and a chimp, should we? And, and my argument's kind of like, I'll, I'll pose it the same way. If I could take a chimpanzee and bring it back and put it into an environment, but without another group of chimpanzees to live with and to be in, along among chimps, an environment that's familiar, should I? And we do that right now, and I'm uncomfortable with that. Yeah. So I'd be really uncomfortable with us bringing back just one animal, one one thing from its you know ecosystem or from its time frame, and bringing it back and like, hey, welcome to our world. Okay. And you're the only one, the only one, mm. just you. Um, uh, 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 I'm going to ask a question that is going to make it sound more cruel and more gross, but I hope awesome. and suspect that you will find it more humane and thoughtful. What if you could grow Lucy without a head? No head, no brainstem, nothing but just autonomic functions. Mm -hmm. You have a little AI bot that, that makes sure that the blood is pumping and the air is breathing and the lungs are going. There's no, there's no consciousness or anything that resembles any of that. It's just exactly a replica of Lucy with all of the scientific findings that come along with that and none of the liability of bringing back a conscious, semi-conscious, proto-conscious being of any variety. So that, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I remember years ago, I showed this or like years and years, like decades, ago, I showed this article to Justin, which was like this New York Newsweek like editorial about the horror of this or what imagine the horror of you know of a hospital filled with bodies with no brains that are being harvested for organs and i'm like well, where's the horror in that there's no brain like, <laughs> so, yeah, sounds like, to me like a lot of grandmas get to see graduation <laughs> yeah like yeah no no like ah the horrors of tissue banks filled with rows of skin after skin like cool all right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm cool. Oh, what about eyeball? And it's like, yeah, there's no brain there, but I would say that probably the cool thing about Lucy would be able to figure out would be to study her brain. It's like, right. How smart it, was she? Like how, how valuable is that? If we're, if the limiting point is what well, we can't do, we can't ethically give it a brain. I would, I would imagine that there's a fair bit of, you would notice, um, uh, uh, small things that we could take hints from, from the shape of the hands. Yeah, no, I agree. To, there's you, you there's know, stuff to be learned, I, for sure. I, I, you, you, could, you, could, you could poke a brain button or a lack of brain button and then cause, you know, a grip to happen. And you're like, oh, that's the kind of grip that this, this you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uses. Digestive systems. There's a lot to be gleaned from that. Absolutely. Absolutely a lot to, that could be gleaned from that. So yeah. uh, uh, it, it, yeah. just one quick button on it. Uh, when, when you were talking about what it's like, the, the ethical implications of bringing someone back and only having one. Uh, I remember in high school, I was reading a collection of uh, science fiction short stories. And in this one, uh, this guy is at a party and uh, he's talking to folks and, and they're all like, oh, so what brings you here? And he's like, weirdest thing, man. I, uh, I, I died in the 20th century, but I was frozen in ice and I was uh, defrosted. And now uh, uh, they were able to repair enough of my body that here I am in the 22nd century. And then the person... Uh, kind of takes a sip of their wine and says, oh, that's, that's cool. We don't get many of those. And uh, dude's like really bummed out by the weird reaction that it gets at a party and then eventually um, has his suspicions and goes and, and jabs himself in the finger. And at first it hurts, but then he keeps on pushing and then it stops hurting. And then he rips off enough of his finger to realize that he's just an android made as a party <laughs> trick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I was, uh, oh, it still, it still gives me the Ooh, that's good. That's, day. Is that, that sounds like a Philip yeah. K. Dick almost kind of, yeah. kind of sorry. Yeah. Uh, but that idea rough. of just somebody casually saying, oh, we don't get many of those. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, sorry. Yeah. You've I'm, gotten I'm, them before? How many? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, it's like, this is my story that I'm going to never have to pay for another drink on. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> 
the 20th century and uh where's everybody going <laughs> that was like uh you've seen the show upload right uh no but i'm familiar with the conceit it's it's sort of like um an evil comedic jaded version of the good place where where somebody just uploads their consciousness to uh to, a, to an ad it's... supported uh, afterlife it's devs meets good place. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I like there's a I point like where the guy the, the guy gets <laughs> uploaded and they have his funeral, but they got a video wall. And so he's in the virtual realm on the other side at his own funeral, you know, and so he can watch it and they can interact with him and see him, but nobody bothers talking to him. Nobody cares. Because <laughs> it's not really him. It's like who wants to who wants to actually talk no. with the Well, and his girlfriend it, it, who is like still him. alive, like left him. Like she's like, oh, I'm gonna join you. I'll I'll go and be with you eventually. But like she's making this party a big social gathering for herself, and it's but it's yeah, a- but it's like it's not that it's not that it's not him. It's just it's like, hey, everybody, I, I moved to Canada. Cool. Hey, so tell me the other day what happened over here. Hey, Canada's pretty cool. Like, great. You 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 moved on. Celebration of life here. over here. Just it's, gonna, it's like it's yeah. like a 1895. Somebody definitely just died of syphilis, uh, and they're having the funeral. And they do have a Ouija board over here, but nobody can be bothered to use the Ouija <laughs> board because it's like, well, yeah. hold on. I mean, I'm going to get another drink. I'll be right back. It's even like shaking a little bit. And I was like, can you can someone put a stone on that or something? Can we get a paperweight for the Ouija? He, he can call his friends and stuff and nobody else like, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's like the saddest thing because this is like, well, you're dead now. Yeah, it's you. I know it's you. It's all, but. There is, again, to dodge spoilers, but there's another show, this one on HBO that Bryce hates, <laughs> um, where where that that is a plot device at, at, at somebody who might have been in Breaking Bad. You don't remember that? I don't remember that. He gets phone calls repeatedly, and he keeps letting them go to voicemail. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Weird, Andrew I don't knows what that. I'm talking about. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Well, well you have to tell me after the show. Okay. All right. I will. Um. Yeah. So I got another another. Uh, <laughs> it's on the same topic. Uh. So, uh, Brian. Uh. Yeah. You, you have old photos of old family members, oh. like you know, are, great are gonna, great grandparents. Are we going to upscale and... them and put them in the the Rick Astley video? <laughs> Is that what's going to happen? We're going <laughs> to. We're, yes and better and we're going to animate them oh so we can oh this is a you're getting the harry potter photos oh. you seen these? no i Anna, have not this is a right? creepy and weird i have seen these this uh. is an app called my heritage and you sign up i think it's like an ancestry sort of thing you give it an old photo and it'll animate these photos it'll kind of make the head turn and the eyes move a little bit uh it works pretty well uh, if it's like one head and there's not a hat, it doesn't know what to do with hats. I, 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 I suddenly J.K. Rowling is is awful. What a terrible idea! Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't like this at all. Oh no, no! I think this it's is sweet. A old lady grimace. The problem is, here's my problem with this: is like they take a photo and they apply an algorithm and a method to bring it to life and animate it, whatever, but without knowing. You know, what was your grandfather's smile really like? What did he look like? And so it's applying the same sort of animation algorithm to everything. Oh, and and, and imagine in a world where you become familiar enough where there's only like five smile archetypes. And then you're you're like, like my dad wouldn't smile like a Slytherin. He would smile like a Hufflepuff. (laughs) Yeah, I don't. Well, it's not. What I think covers up some of that is the fact that like you know the head's kind of moving and they're blinking a little bit but they're more just kind of like idle they're not like you know smiling and you know saying oh, i i love you my great grandchildren you know well, I, it, I think that helps obscure yet. some of, it's, not yet yeah but it's a bit where like part of the allure and charm of photos is everybody looks and thinks what were they thinking and this is one answer for everyone they're all thinking I am bored. <laughs> yeah. I am well, bored. Well, back then it used to take eternity. it used to take so long to take they photos. They probably were bored. Were, actually. Yeah, yeah. The, the so, so there's had the window. Out. The bird inside the camera had to peck out the whole thing. Yeah. You know, and it's then a go. Living. It's, it's a, a Flintstones reference for a oh. younger generation out there. I'm, yeah, um, I, I'm, 
I'm all for like figuring out how to reconstruct the past. AI, all this sort of stuff. This to me is, you know, it weird. I mean, um, I bet there is a non-zero number of people who miss their loved ones. Who, and also love Harry Potter. Who and, would like one last look, I don't know, look at them. Well, the right? it, it point is, Bryce, is we're talking about, like, of all the photos they show are people who, were like, would have passed away before we had, like, video cameras and stuff, right? So Or you're, lawsuits. You're, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I've, got, I've got all my family members on video, you know, so... Mm -hmm. That's I mean, the thing. Like, what? To, to me, this uh, is in the same ballpark as like, you know, colorizing old photos and video, right? Where, you know, someone takes, a, you know, artistic license to to take these old black and white photos and kind of approximate what it might have looked like. But, you know, they're not necessarily accurate. In a lot of cases, those, you know, recolorized photos are not accurate really at all or they're subject to all of the biases that we have um nowadays i uh, i think this is a very similar space one uh color reproduction with AI algorithms has gotten uh, algorithms which is the drunk version of an algorithm <laughs> have gotten <laughs> way 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 better now. way better we've seen how that's improved a lot two is there might be some ambiguity and false color and color stuff but when they're having you know your family you know uncle ed go yeah you know doing an expression he never did before completely alien to him that's my issue is it's like they're all they're all like oh yeah and this is how they would look around like no that, that's this is they're applying you know like brian says a one of five they're gonna do expression number one two three four five and that's where it just gets so false to me hmm. Well, and I mean, unfortunately, that's a fidelity problem, isn't it? That that's just the, the that's us at the Atari twenty six hundred level of fidelity, not at the PlayStation five level of fidelity. Well, at some point, they're going to be better at evoking everything we remember or think we remember about a person. By, uh, I mean, at some point, everything is going to be able to pass the Turing test for us, you know? Yeah, I and I, I'm not, again, I'm all, I'm pro the idea of reconstruct. I would say that there's one where it's going to be, I'm going to take an image and just apply a generic algorithm versus, oh, we're going to take this image and we're going to run it through an AI that's actually able to pick, or pick, you know, like we can tell a lot, crazy amounts of details from facial details and stuff like this. And maybe a few other photographs, like we'll take a sequence of photographs and now we have a pretty good way to predict and we have a way to show you this is maybe how this person, you know, that, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. That's I'm excited about that part. Well, and, the, and, and I well, think it is important to sort of divorce. Um, uh, I think something all three of us are saying various versions of uh, uh, I think we're all on the same page where it's like there's not a moral judgment to be made here. But we're talking no. about the oogie factor. <laughs> we're yeah. currently we're currently gauging our ooginess, not 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 uh, the morality of of whether or not this is a good idea or a bad one. And my guess is, I I don't know a lot about my heritage. I'm assuming that they are like a ancestry dot com. Yeah, it looks like they are like a learn about your lineage. Well, so, so I think that there's a there's you know talking about pulling on the heartstrings like that's the most like. Um, I don't know. This is a very like perfect storm application of AI and, you know, a service to people, right? You're looking for people who are interested in their history. Well, hey, here's an app and we can kind of make you feel like, you know, you're in the room with, you know, your great well, uncle. And, and, and that's an interesting question because um, that's one of those uh, we, we've talked before about the difference between um, reading a thing versus shaping a thing. And uh, part of me says, let's say, 20 to 50 years from now, there's some, you know, ultra version of an Oculus, or maybe it's even in an exhibit at, 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 at Disney planet or whatever. Um, but it's like, yeah, just give us your DNA. We'll match it with the database. We were pretty sure we got most of the bone st structures, histories. We've cross-checked it with, uh, uh, cultural norms as the world's best historians understand them for various time periods throughout all of history. Um, it will be most accurate uh, for the generation to five generations behind you. After that, we're going to be filling in a lot of gaps with frog DNA, but, but it will in general be as though you are meeting your great, great grandfather, your great, 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 great grandfather, your, your proto hundred thousand years ago, 
uh, grandmother and so on. Like, um, the, the, the question I have is, I mean, number one, I would definitely, I know the answer is I would do it. I would ride that ride, but, but even, even if it is quote for novelty purposes only, I fear that it would shape my reality to feel as though I, I have met all of my progenitors. Does, does that, does that any of that ring with you, Andrew? I think, I think that there's going to be, there, there are two pathways and hopefully we will probably get a mixture of both. One is a pathway where we, we have the fake knowledge, you know, the, the fake, I feel like this is real, but there is nothing really guaranteed gleaned from it. It's all sort of fake. The other pathway is, I get that feeling of being around them or talking to them, but also I was able to learn something because we used advanced ma machine learning and algorithms to understand more about that period in time. And I could ask him questions and he could tell me things that wasn't, I didn't know in my family history that turns out to be true because, you know, at, talking to my great grandfather and we've got every single phone book from Minnesota from the time period they lived in there. And they have a pretty good idea who his friends are. You know, I like it's like, oh, tell me, I used to hang out with so-and-so. Ah, is that real? And I go look up and find out like, oh, yeah, no, that's true. And, you know, 80% of what you hear could be true because the, the algorithm is so good at predicting these things. That's what's exciting to me is where we could get a high chance of real information. Right. And, and, and a factual amount of cross-checking based on uh, your ethnicity, um, uh, when you came to America, how, what generation you were, who you associated with, geographically where you came from or whatever – like, uh, they can't say for sure that, say, eight generations back, a relative of mine was super duper racist and outspoken about it and, and, and a belligerent drunk or whatever. But, but they could say, hey, man, demographically, per the study, this, this matches the fingerprint of everything we're seeing. That's another thing, too, is that, <laughs> like, you know, man, like, we're going to find out, like, our, our great great grandma, they're pretty damn racist. <laughs> you know, that is the thing. <laughs> That's yeah, a very some ideas I'm very uncomfortable with. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Although mine fought were abolitionists who fought for the North. So uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, the ones uh, I talk about. The ones I talk about. So uh, lucky. Uh, and, and number one, I hundred percent believe you. But does that give you just a little bit more hesitation to step into the magic Disney Planet machine to find out oh, for sure? Oh, oh, God. oh no! Yeah, I <laughs> you're like you know what? I'm cozy with the story. Ah, uh, that's fine. It's fine. No, I want to. I, I accept <laughs> this truth. Uh, did you see the uh, the TikTok of Tom Cruise doing the uh, the coin vanish? No. You gonna see this? Is it good? Go. Yeah. I, uh, let me see. I'm gonna show you some magic. Ooh. It's the real thing. <laughs> oh. I mean, uh, it's all the real thing. Okay. The real magic trick is the de-aging software that was clearly done on his face. There well, is zero chance that's actually how he looks. Well, I think you're right because bum bum bum, it's a deep fake. Oh wait, really? <laughs> ah! <laughs> What's funny is I'm so accustomed to like uh, I, Tom Cruise specifically really gets your your de-aging <laughs> technology well, 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 because because he's the only person that I've heard of, and I'm sure other people have it, but they've been quieter about it. But I've heard that in Hollywood, it is baked into every single contract that he is to always be digitally de-aged. So he never appears older than either 50 or 55 or something like that. Um, and every time you ever see him, like just knowing, ooh, that's amazing. Yeah. This, that's great. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, he, they, this, this person did, did a few of these videos over the, over the weekend uh, with, with the deep fake Tom Cruise. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I don't know, Andrew, were you as surprised as I was about how much like traction this got in terms of news coverage? Uh, so. No, I mean, well, first, if somebody said to me, like, hey, what do you think about this? I'm like, that's a horrible French drop for a guy that wanted to play Houdini. <laughs> right? I think he would have done a better job. And then I'm like, oh, wait, that face. There's like, I, you, you, could, you could spot the whole. And then I'm like, oh, wait. I looked at it again. I'm like, oh, that's a deep fake. And I'm like, this is a really good deep fake. I think the reason is that it got traction because so many people accepted the crappy, crappy, crappy thing we saw in Mandalorian and thought that was state of the art. And right. we realized, like, no, that is garbage. That was garbage, 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 horrible, horrible, horrible face. You know, also, also worth, worth noting, if, if, I, if the behind-the-scenes chit-chat that I've read is correct, 
the only reason that we saw that technology used in the Mandalorian is because literally they already had it. Like, well, we've already paid for this. We already have this. This is good to go. It was good enough for, for you know, this this other movie. Let's put it in here. Which it wasn't. Yeah, it it was correct, go, correct, 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 yeah. correct. But, yeah, I mean, it, but it, again, it, when you got it, when you got it, like you have to draw out the budget for these things long before they actually come out. So, well, I, I mean, I, I have a little insight too. And part of it comes down to is every show has, uh, you know, Lucasfilm has their VFX supervisors. And like, yes, they spend a considerable amount of money to develop the process. And they are not. They don't want to admit that it's a, a bad process. They don't want to admit that that process wasn't good then and has been lapped by software that you know average person can use now because it's kind of embarrassing. Because they're supposed to be state of the art, and then you had people, you know, people within 24 hours of that coming out doing way better versions of it. And so, people who are involved in the VFX profit process there are still kind of like, no, ours is really good because of this. Are you sure? Was this really? Are we really there? And so it was a pride thing. Yeah, and I feel bad all of a sudden that the first thing I noticed was how creepy his face was. <laughs> I feel like that says something about me and not about the excellence of the deep fake. Well, I'm mean, talking about the, oh, the Tom, Tom yeah, Cruise. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, yeah, I, I think that the there is uh, some other some other some YouTubers were doing a thing where they're trying to do it. They had a video of it. And theirs really wasn't good. They hired an actor that was even shorter than Tom Cruise and this sort of skinny not guy and it. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, it was just it was it Peter just, Dinklage. Oh come on! But Sorry, you watch right. this one, and they try to like, oh look at this, and you're like, this feels this feels off and fake, and like, oh look at how great this is. I'm like, no, it's not really that good, you know. But this is really good. It may be the same group and the same actor this time, but because this time it's like it's very convincing. Yeah, I mean, even uh, I see you, one of our our chat members for Night Attack, for like. The past like six months has been doing these deep fakes <laughs> in our recap videos that he makes, and like he had what was it last week? He had John. Uh, he had uh, Billy Joel's face on Justin. No, you have to get. We have to get the the um the the uh, the, the, see the chess video? one. The queen's <laughs> okay. no the oh, queen's yeah. gambit. That Bryce on the queen's gambit girl is is. It's, it is uh, uh, well. It's funny because for week after week, he would put our faces on famous scenes, and then to see the reverse of it was very disquieting. Yeah. That was that was very jarring for for me. Yeah, but Just no, no. This, this tech question. this tech is here, man. It is it is large and in charge. So, uh, question from the chat room: Is there a way to be able to spot deep fakes? Uh, yes and no. Like if you watched, uh, Bryce had a thing that showed a frame grab, a, a loop, and you could see the glasses vanish for a moment as it goes past his face. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when objects go in front of the face, there might be little tells or things like this. Sometimes when you look for a lot of movement, you might be able to spot where that is. But you can tell on the are... edge of the frame too, near the edge of the video frame. Sometimes it has trouble figuring yeah. out what goes past it. Yeah, but these algorithms keep getting better. And so the answer is, and, and I, but some people said, oh, look, this vanish is like, like, I can show you an actual real video stuff like that happening too because of the compression algorithms. So we're getting to the point where it's going to be, oh my, <laughs> oh my God, God, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> have, you never, have you never seen this, Andrew? No. Is oh this my amazing? God. <laughs> watching, uh, we're watching the Queen's Gambit trailer with, with Bryce's face. And Bryce, the other guy. Face. <laughs> The other chest. Oh my god! And this is all, all better than what we saw in Mandalorian. All of this is better than Mandalorian. Oh, it's really wonderful. This is why you guys gotta watch the video. We'll have a link in the uh, in the show notes, but it's very upsetting when but, I show up. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like the bit where you're like in the open robe. <laughs> I think that's you don't like it because that that's not that's the one not deep fake. Because <laughs> yeah. that that that's the modern rogue hiring process. Yeah. Bryce, Bryce, come here. Does this spray on tan match? Uh, no, it doesn't. No. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Hey, uh, uh, yeah. uh, how do we keep this show allowed live oh, and independent, right, man? <laughs> Oh, well, you can go to patreon.com uh, oh, oh, slash, patreon slash weird things, friends. Patreon.com slash weird things. Support us right there. Yeah, you get access to the After Things podcast a couple of days before it hits the feeds. 
uh, and all sorts of good stuff. You get your own RSS feed where they all come out together. What? No, you don't got to deal with any passwords in your podcatcher. You don't got to do, oh, I got to authorize the feet. No, dog. They make yeah, it for don't you. Don't authorize the feet. Don't authorize your feet. <laughs> Patreon.com. So, but Chris. seriously, do these match? <laughs> <laughs> no, they still don't. You need to take a mirror <laughs> right. to the store. We've clearly, like we, we, we've clearly passed a point here. And, and it's interesting as Hollywood, as we can see, can be very stubborn to adopt stuff. Then all of a sudden it'll adopt everything. Because like, you're not going to need makeup. You're going to have your actors show up, do their scenes. You're going to take a, you know, the, the, the best shots, the best stuff of them where they look right. Map that onto there. Uh, virtual actors are going to be a lot easier to add into scenes. You'll be able to do that. You know, put three people at a table and, you know, add two more people that are just virtual extras. That's going to be a big thing. It reminds me of uh, uh, soon we all get to be Marlon Brando in Superman 1, where he somehow convinced the directors, like, I think it'll be better if you only use my first take. And instead of looking down at a baby, I'm looking down at the script. And I'm just yeah. reading the script, but the baby that you think is off screen is actually the script. Also, just use the first take. It's the only one that's going to be any good. I'll take my millions of dollars. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> like, soon we all get to be that guy. That's Brando. And, but the amazing thing is how his, his takes were so good, though. They were they even good. used him in Superman, Superman Returns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long after the Donner era. And also, I found out that Donner wasn't, wasn't even there through all of Superman 1. I, I, I did not know this. They shot Superman 1 and 2 back to back. And so uh, what happened was, because Superman 2 is credited to uh, was the guy who did uh, the Beatles. Some... Yeah, the other guy. Um, uh, Ringo, so, Paul, no, he, George. Uh, uh, boy, this dude loves visual gags. Uh, I've been watching um, <clears throat> Caravan of Garbage. Richard uh, Lester, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, man, do they take that whole series to task, and Richard Lester specifically. Like, they call out, like, boy, he loves wacky <clears throat> gags. It's it's amazing. Well, they because they did, remember when they went to go produce Superman, they brought in Mario Puzo to go work on the script, because coming high off of, of Godfather, he was such a big name. And the first take was like, ah, it's got to be this jokey comic book stuff. And you see those beats in there. And some of them are, it's still a great movie. Superman 1 and 2, I still think are great. Yes. Um, product of their times, but still, I think for decades, still held up as some of the best superhero films because of the performances alone. But but yeah, you go through there and you look at like, ah, it's got to be it's got to be kind of a cartoon kind of like. And it's like, no, no, no. But uh, the, the, yeah. the one thing on Caravan of Garbage that they are unwavering on is their complete support and amazement at Christopher Reeves' performance from beginning to end every, no matter how good or bad the script is, no matter how wacky or dumb the gag is, that dude sells Superman. Like and nobody since. It's been amazing. And Margot Kidder. Every yes. Lois Lane since the Superman movies, they've tried to go for a Margot Kidder type. Yeah. Down to the facial structure. Like oh. almost always, the, always try to find that Margot Kidder quality to her. Also, Margot Kidder, like... um. Uh, for being a journalist, uh, they point out that, uh, boy, four times during the movie, she doesn't know how to spell things. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's like the that's funny, her yeah. bit, is to constantly yeah. be asking how many T's in, in a word. Because <laughs> that was they, because she was so good at getting into trouble and getting the story, but when it came to, like, uh, you know, spelling and that, like, yeah, that was the, the, but she was just, she would find the story. That's what I loved about it, was she was just a, she was a great match for him. Yeah. You guys hey, want to do picks? Yeah, I got I got a weird one for you that I did not expect. I stumbled into this one, uh, walked into the room, and I was like, "What is this?" And uh, my kids uh, are Saint watching. Worship Daddy. Uh, no, <laughs> but my my eight year old and my thirteen year old just on their own decided to watch The Croods from twenty thirteen, uh -oh. uh, a movie that I saw all the promotions for, and uh, I, I still don't know who released it. I assumed it was DreamWorks, and I was just like. Yeah, another one of these DreamWorks thing. You just make a sneery face, and that's a DreamWorks movie. <laughs> um, I watched about five minutes. I came in at like the 12 or 13 minute mark, and it's when all I see is uh, these cave people who are like, uh, in like three minutes, it had me hooked because they, they are refugees, and they end up with what very clearly are meant to be coastal elites. And I realize... Oh my God, this is Ohio visits California. And this is them putting up with different parenting styles and everything. 
uh, loved it. It's smart. Hmm. It's funny. The pacing. It's 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 whip smart, and the and the the comedy pacing is is great. There's no fat to trim on it. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Bit weird that Jack Black shows up to sing the last song for no reason whatsoever. Uh, although I believe he's in the second cruise. I don't know, but uh, it was pretty good. I, I liked it quite a bit. I think they made a third one last year. If you want more crudes, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think one crude is all I needed. Uh, I, That's I, what I, we said I, about Shrek too. And look yeah. at that. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah. Hey man, uh, it, it eventually <laughs> got us to mouth sounds, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Justin, you got a pick? Uh, yes, we finished Raised by Wolves uh, on HBO Max, and my biggest complaint is that it's called Raised by Wolves <laughs> because I feel like uh, uh, if it were just called Crazy Robot Planet. I, I would have watched it sooner. Uh, it, it look, it, it is a high concept show in, and it is a, a, a show transparently about philosophy and parentage and, and the nexus therein. But guess what? They do it with robots and, and crazy space crusaders and arcs and guns and creatures and, and a, a really, uh, a, 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 a mythology that at times reminded me of like, oh, this is competent lost. This is what I wanted out of Prometheus. Like when you were like looking to explore the world of of uh, 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 the alien and, and the xenomorph and everything, it's like that's the kind of stuff that I I wanted. Raised by Wolves was it it delivered every inch of that. And also, it's like I know we're in award season now. I don't know if that lady has gotten the 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 lead uh, android has gotten any um award recognition but she is stellar uh, the the male android is stellar like I don't think that people really appreciate how quickly that entire premise would fall apart if they are not walking this line between being very engaging uh, you know, making you want to root for them, but also them being apart from us. That that's a that's a that's a tremendous challenge. And, and then add to the d d degree of difficulty that they're acting against children the entire time. Yeah. Like uh, notoriously th th talented a... <laughs> child actors. That's why they say whenever you can work with child actors, they're super easy to work with. Yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 insane, and also it makes mullets look really cool. Oh my <laughs> god, does it make mullets look cool? Like very pro I don't mullet. Know if I've ever, I don't know if I've ever watched a show and just been like, I looked at me and Ashley, and I'm like, man, we should go with mullets, man. This, this stuff is crazy. It looks great. It's it's a lot going on, and it's one of these things. Like normally, I hate when you jump into the second episode and you get backstory. Here it's really cool because it set up such an interesting. It sometimes you get backstory like, oh, he had a Jack had a fight with his father, and that's I don't care. I don't need. It does not make yeah. the story more interesting. Here, like, well, there's a civil war between atheists and a religious group. Like, what does that mean? Well, we'll show you so you understand what the stakes are here. And they're like, oh wow, okay. We, uh, so, I think we mentioned this last week, but we're starting to watch this or rewatch this for for spoiler in time, a part of Court Killers, and. Uh, just watching that first episode, the um, there's it's a, a whole season. It's the the scene that takes place on the spaceship. Uh, that's all I'll say. But that scene, the very iconic scene that takes place on the spaceship, I thought that was in the second or third episode. I could not believe that that was still in the first episode, and that's like halfway through. There's it's, so so much. It's great, and much like a second season might sometimes say. Yeah, forget everything you heard in the first season. This is what the show's really about. On the second season, they do that on the second episode. It's unreal. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, there there is a narrative momentum to this show where you land, or you know, literally, there's a landing, but like you 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 drop in and you're like, oh, this is what the sh no, wow, we're <laughs> we're going pretty fast here. I guess it's not about that. And, and it's certainly not about that. Okay, well maybe. Uh, 
And then like, oh, well, maybe it's about her dream. No, okay, we're already past that. Like the, they, they, the, they, the credits roll, you open up the door, you look down to a little boy and say, little boy, what day is it? And he says, it's Christmas. And you're like, the way he raised by wolves, they did it all in one night. <laughs> it was it's, magic. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's crazy. Like they jam a boring first season into an episode and it <laughs> right. rules. It's so like, you know, it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've got a pick. I watched this over the weekend after uh, a recommendation from a friend. I, I I was interested by the trailer, and uh, I mostly had a pretty good time with it. It is the new uh, Netflix film. I care a lot. I don't know if you guys mm. have seen this. this I, is, I, I've seen the buzz about it. That's about it. Uh, it's it's Rosamund Pike, um, and uh, uh, what's his name is is also in this. Peter Dinklage Peter is Dinklage. like is, is got a, a role in it. Uh, basically, she is um, a professional caregiver, kind of running the an, an old person caregiver scheme. She teams up with doctors and nursing homes to declare hence, hence old the title, yeah, to declare old people, uh, you know, unfit to take care of themselves, and she puts them in a home and sells all their assets and makes all this money. Um, I thought. I thought I I went into this and I came out of it wanting to know more about that and that practice of how how often does this happen what is and and kind of the second third act of the movie kind of goes a little goofy um it, it it goes a little goofy especially with with Peter Dinklage's um uh role in in the film um which was just a little a, a little bit of a shame because I I I would believe that that a non-zero amount of this happens in America today, and I kind of wanted a more realistic look instead of like kind of this weird mix of like girl bosses get it done, and here is the Russian mob fighting you because you picked the wrong lady. Like I I I I I I I, I felt that the the that aiming for it was very weird but it, but it's a very thrilling like good movie like i think there are a lot of really strong scenes of 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 tension and and um kind of not being sure you know what is ultimately going to happen um it's maybe a little long too but i i so, I, I think it, it it's it's fine it's good it's funny because like i watched the trailer for this and i turned to my girlfriend i said oh, that's kind of cool a great premise because it's not really done and she said the same thing someone in the chat room said wasn't that like the dad and say anything and i'm like yeah but that was like 35 years ago that we had that come <laughs> yeah. up as a topic you, you just had your office space moment of some of calling out like isn't that the plot of superman 3 <laughs> like, yeah. like well yes but it works <laughs> well, I'm like it's like 30 we don't it's like a, it's a thing that happens a lot and it's not used a lot for stories which is yeah, there's another there's a movie out now about like the whole addiction system where you get or roll people in addiction recovery centers and the the bounties they get and like there are all these sort of scammy schemey things right on the surface that are meant to help people and don't but i digress yeah my my pick i was i was delightfully surprised i don't know where the rest of the series is going to go but for a pilot and for setting up stakes and where the story is i was very interested um, and I'm talking about Superman and Lois. Any of you see this yet? No, I, I, that's another one I've seen some buzz about. Um, uh, what what network or over the top network is it? I think it's CW, it's, right? Yeah, it's CW. But uh, you can you can. Oh, this stream is the new Superman guy too. Yeah, yeah, Tyler yeah. Hoechlin. So you can stream it like on CW, the Steve app with commercials. But I just went and bought the first episode. So the premise is Superman and Lois got married, and they have two teenage sons. You know, but they're of their sons. And uh, they're basically kind of their life together. It's a bit more drama than your CW sort of show, at least so far. It's got a little more weight to it, which is what I like, because some of the CW shows, like, fly, people are like, Flash is fun. But I'm like, they have a prison underneath. They're like, these are horrible people. Like, they literally are like, you know, it's just no habeas corpus. They're like, literally like vigilantes imprisoning people in the horse. You know, like, they've got Guantanamo under this thing, and nobody's asking about that. Mm. point is... It gets the questions aren't asked here uh, so far. So good. Um, so I enjoyed it. And like, imagine the kind of it's set modern day and they have to go back to Smallville for reasons. And uh, Smallville's got problems. Uh, meth, 
uh, some extreme Ooh. poverty. <laughs> Ooh, that's no tasty. This, I, what a, what a, what a, what a, uh, the story, uh, not Matt. No, no, no. I, well, yeah. what, what, what I mean Both is, price, um, yeah. uh, <laughs> the, the brighter a candy shell gets, the more I hunger for, for some darkness to go with it. And it sounds yeah. like there's no, there's no, there's no shortage of darkness in everything you just said. Yeah. And that's what I loved about it was cause like they, they have to, you know, the premise is they're going to go, go back and live in Smallville and spoiler alert. But that's what they really say when you watch the trailer. But like the fact that like Smallville's like, you know, somebody says like, yeah, well, you know, when you have to go answer fires and it's because some mom burned down the house making meth. And I'm like, oh, this Smallville sounds fascinating. <laughs> this so, Smallville sounds like realville. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's trying to like address what's happening in middle America, which is a story that's kind of not talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. outside of middle america of of kind of the erosion of what's happening there well, and, and so uh, there, there, there's definitely like um it's i would imagine hollywood's problem is partly because it's hard to tell the story of poverty-stricken rural america without either taking a side politically or being looking like you're taking a side politically and without looking like you're punching down or whatever it's like we we uh i i I, I think you're right. I think there's a the wire that belongs in rural middle America. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it's 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 weird because it doesn't have to be really political. It's about the problems of poverty, right? <laughs> you know? well, well, and, and maybe maybe, yeah. maybe it's a, a Superman show that can pull the trick because it has a yeah. coupon of yeah. uh, pretending it's not really about that at all. Yeah, and that's what I really liked was I like the setup of sort of the premise because you have Lois Lane, I think the actress plays her, she's great, super capable, what have you. And the idea of you're gonna get complications, and they've got the big mega story too, and all the thing going on. But I like I'm like, yeah, I like the fact that we're gonna put Superman into a world where you can rescue people from a house that's this doesn't happen, but you can rescue people from a house that's burning down, but you can't stop the mom from using meth. Right. Which what do you do? So anyhow, first, I only seen the first episode, which I enjoyed. Uh, I thought all the actors are great, really well cast. Dude, we'll, and... we'll, we'll know it's, we'll know. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I was going to give a big old spoiler on the wire. Never mind. I mean, I think we're past the point now with the wire. Okay, I okay. Well, then, then, uh, I, I, you'll know, you'll know it's nailing it when, when Superman like invents a serial killer <laughs> to help solve the problem of how to get uh, the money faucet running to take care of everyone. Oh, cool yeah all right gentlemen it's been weird am i hey. the only one who remembers season five of the wire literally no. not seen that. Yes. <laughs> for, for the best for the best <laughs> that was fine all right everybody we are gonna take a minute here and uh, right take back. a break and come back for some after things i got an email we can read for after things by the way andrew okay um Hi, Justin. Hey, I'm very present. Yeah, there, there are no fires going on right now. It is very it's... present, and I'm definitely going to stay for after things. <laughs> well, why don't I just put on a little bit of music so that? Well, no, we can talk. We can, we can. Okay. I can carry the mail until we get to after things, but I will. Um. Uh, probably have to bail shortly after that. No worries. Totally. Of course. Of course, um, uh, what was oh goodness, what was I gonna say? Um, mm, 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 mm. all right, all right, all right, all right, I'm here, I'm okay. here, I'll stop doing things. Okay. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, Hi. Bryce, man, what's going on, dude? What's what's happening? Uh, what's, what's going on? Uh, I, uh, uh, I, I did my watching for Raised by Wolves last night and yeah it was great it was so great it, it 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 took all of the annoyance of of uh having my laundry take until 2 a.m to uh <laughs> to oh to, to, is there, are you guys still just dealing with the backlog of a common laundry room after all the water i no it's just uh i so seven o'clock i go to the laundry room to go put some stuff in and the servers are down for the the company that does the digital payments yeah. So, okay. Well then, so I wait a couple hours. I see that I can log into my phone. So I go back and I put my, I put a load in and then I come back after a half hour when it should be done. And, oh, there's a big error code on the washing machine. That washing machine is broken. 
and it ate and it ate my money because it's the digital yeah. the digital thing. So, uh, so that just made everything take way longer and waste a bunch of time. Um, but I, otherwise, it seemed like everything was working. I think I was. Um, oh, I guess I did not mention this on the on the streams, but um, they, uh, you know, I I didn't think it would be until like the weekend, Friday or Saturday, when they would get our water turned up, back on, and then just Wednesday they roll up and say like, "Hey, we're we're turning your stuff on. I'm just gonna walk in and I'm gonna leave. And okay, bye." And they email us like, yeah, we got every other building except like these three that have got problems uh, turned back on like super quick. So um, water's back, everybody. Water's back on the menu. Awesome. I would like uh, to announce that the, in the generic soda wars, the Vaughn's signature brand diet zero calorie soda. Yeah. Pretty damn uh -huh. good. Oh, nice. A stunning endorsement <laughs> that will turn the tide. <laughs> I used to get the uh, the H E B brand cola, the brown cola, um, but I what was I, I for whatever reason I got a case that was bad or the formula wasn't the same thing, and and it made me just go again. I bought like three or four at a time, and they were all like not great, and so I had to be like, okay, well now I'm just gonna stick with the, the name brand because well like the Vons like house brand, it's like it's like a twelve pack for three bucks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I tried like I'll try they were all out of Diet Coke. I'm like uh. I guess I'll get this piss, you know, <laughs> and I go take it. I drink it. I'm like, this is really good. And now I like crave it. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's human blood. Maybe it's human blood. Oh, and he's given the shaky hand too. That's wow. Uh, human blood's got its benefits. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, 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 let me see here. Um, I'm going to forward you this email, Andrew, that we can read on the show if you want to do a letter. Um, <laughs> unless you had another topic lined up. In which case we can get this. Lots time. of topics, but I'm always happy to put that aside for. <laughs> All right, there we go. There we go. It's been forwarded. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if you heard Justin mention, but he'll probably have to duck out. Or yeah, I I'm in the middle of a of a thing. I'm interrogating. I'm following a few leads here, <laughs> finding out why uh, some some cheese weasel. Uh, uh, sold their place for six thousand dollars over market value in the midst of a gigantic housing boom in oh. austin that might have hey don't you know what you don't worry about it you and you know what brian's joined us why don't you take a why don't you take why don't you hit the road and figure All that right. out don't even worry about us we got the rest of this we'll do see on. you later see Bye. Andrew, justin he's gonna get it figured out everybody don't worry oh some real life stuff happening yeah a little bit so uh we'll just we'll just let him go and figure that out he's got things to do mm. well just make sure he's back in an hour for happy hour oh i no, i'm teasing okay i was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a real real jerk move for me to pull. <laughs> all right let's see da, 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 da. Ba, 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 ba. oh let me pull this up over here all right, so we do have an email for After Things. It would be fun. Ba, 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 ba. All right. How are you feeling, Andrew? Man, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, th I think he means yes, he's ready to go. Okay. Justin, how are you? Oh, no. Oh. 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 All right, well, let me catch in for After Things here in three, two, Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. And uh, Gilderoy Lockhart, Brian Brushwood. Yeah, man. Hey, is it official? Is my hair longer than yours at this point, Bryce? Uh, probably not. My hair's curly. Mm, oh, we get this. Okay. We get this. See, my, this mine's mine reach my collarbone. Uh, okay. No. Yeah. Well, I don't know if uh, I uh, if uh, I uh, grab uh, from the mullet section. Eh, pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. Can almost tie it underneath Andrew, my chin. Andrew, who do you think? Who yeah, he's got the longer yeah. hair. You got it. You could. I mean, that's collarbone. Bryce has got the edge. Yeah. Okay. Collarbone. All right. We'll see. <laughs> I, I, I cut he, wakes, he wakes up with a buzz cut tomorrow. Oh, no! <laughs> what? What happened? The BB logo shaved in the <laughs> yeah. back of it. I cut my own hair again, guys. Oh, uh, really? See, you're getting, and it's it's looking good. You're getting used to it. You kind of have to get used to. The process yeah. of it being in your own hand. Are you are you are you are you flobing it or or just straight up scissoring? 
I use a razor on the sides and scissors on the top. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, uh, I never, I ne- I was never able to use the the buzz cut on the sides. I would always go to a, a barber shop for that. But when I was doing the spiked hair, mm-hmm. like um, I got very good at using those texturizing scissors, the ones with the, like the the nested teeth or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because because that's that's how you got those sharp tips. Was just and and if you screwed it up, like you you could literally, I could put my hair up and spike and it spikes and it was quite literally just like you know trimming hedges, like like too tall, too tall, not tall enough. Yep, that's right, that's right, and mm-hmm. I'm done. yeah. I, I hate going to get a haircut. We talked about this before, so. Oh, no. I mean, as, as a matter of fact, like, I, I, I just had the luxury of my first beard trim in a year. It ah. was great having somebody who is not me responsible oh, for Oh, yeah. You got that jerk. line. Yeah. You got, the, you got that, that clean line. Look at yeah. that. Did they give you the oil stuff, or is it too short? No. I, I, it was a walk-in at some. You know, oh, yeah. You know. They, all, you know, oil's for, for appointment. <laughs> Oil is for closers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was, I forgot, we already started our show here and you got a big uh, digression. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know it was after shave things. <laughs> yeah. uh, come on, come on, that was not bad. That's pretty good at that joke. Uh, yeah, everybody, uh, this, this is your extra content. This is a, can't understand why our numbers are dropping. <laughs> so, uh, we uh, we got a, a email here hmm. and... Uh, First, uh, it's to Bryce. Bryce, why yes. don't you read the email? Sure. Uh, so, so this is from Nicholas. Nicholas, um, uh, I, I uh, nope. Uh, I um, uh, mentioned on a previous after things that uh, uh, someone had sent in um, some gifts for the Marbles uh, Stream Project winners, the little bottle opener and the stopper. Who gave the one for on Night oh, Attack yeah, a few weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. So this is wait, this is Nicholas. Wait, wait, Bryce, number one. Oh my goodness, okay. the promo you did on Saturday Marble Stream was great. My whole family loved it. I was going to skip that part. <laughs> no, no, Bryce. Bad Bryce. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay, so uh, uh, Nicholas writes, one, oh my goodness, the promo you did on Saturday Marbles was great. My whole family loved it, too. I am late on getting... I told I told Nicholas to send in an email for After Things because he had some questions about, about his business. I hope you guys are okay if I put it here. He writes, dear After Things, I recently started a side hustle during 2020. I've been doing a lot of work on the lathe uh, and with resin, uh, uh, I started a website, spilledcoffeeworkshop.com. I feel uh, like I've done all the easy stuff, and I'm looking for ways to get my site out there and figure out what else I can do. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, what Nicholas does is he makes acrylic uh, goods. Um, little He makes bottle, lo- bottle openers and stoppers and rings and stuff, uh, pendants and all. Uh, so uh, what else can he do to promote his things? Things he's done. He started a mailing list reached out to online communities, made things I think are cool, things I'm not sure of. How important is the pictures, I guess the photography on his website? Is it good or good enough? Are the bottle openers cool? People I've shown or given them to uh, think so, but more opinions always help. And things I've got planned going forward, uh, writing a monthly newsletter with shop updates, um, if you have a recommendation for the newsletter platform, and maybe doing videos. Thank you, Nicholas. I, I have a suggestion I think using the photos is great. I think that on your bottle opener sets, I did not know if you scroll down, I just at first glance, I'm like, man, that looks awfully a lot like it. Go further down, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. It looks a lot like drug paraphernalia. Correct. It does. It definitely looks like uh, a, a nice little pipe. Which, so I would maybe separate those two things. I, <laughs> so they I, lay. What, what, what's funny is, to be honest, I would I would actually lean the other way. I would instead, I could imagine a world where your intent is to collect, uh, uh, grab yourself 30 influential mid to low tier YouTubers, people who are starving for content and attention, roughly in the 20,000 to 200,000 subscription level. And... Um, uh, send them all of them and, and put on there, here is your challenge. This is a gift to you. And once you figure out what it is, you'll be very pleased. Can you figure out what it is? And then, and then get all of them to talk about it. Uh. Do a super cut, eight famous YouTubers, try to figure out what these are. Uh, and then, and then they'll realize the truth, uh, which is, you know, they're an awesome bottle opener and a, and a stopper. Um, cause I then, think the bottle opener especially doesn't I had not Look, seen one. I've never seen one like that before. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it, it looks, I always, I like to ha- carry it because it has like a little handle on it. It's that, almost like a, like the little Sailor Moon 
things. The the photo we're looking at right now where we see them next to each other, the corks I like. I'm saying the other ones, and I'm not saying they look like cool drug paraphernalia. They look like low they look like meth paraphernalia. <laughs> and so I'm like, I would like maybe like the other like the photo on the left where you see that that's good. The photo on the right, I first look at like, man, like that just looks it looks like, I feel fight, like I'm gonna dog. get arrested. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. That only uh, 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 that the, the dangerous undercurrents and, <laughs> and the uh, only makes it more punk I rock mean, to, to my eyes. I, I I think there's hippie and edge, and there's then there's there's hippie and edge drugs, and then there's really sad and depressing drugs. <laughs> and so I I I, I wouldn't want to lean into the meth side too much myself. But you know, Brian, you're the branding expert. Well, you decide. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's it, it is one of those things where it's like uh, that that is a good point. Let's say you do want to reach out to a bunch of influencers and give these as gifts and encourage them to try to figure out what it is. Get ready for every single one. To, to give some answer of the same joke, well, I'm hoping it's only pot paraphernalia and not meth paraphernalia. Um, but if you're comfortable with that, then, then, then roll with it. And also the nice thing is they're gonna say whatever they want to their folks and their tribe, but you in your Supercut video get to edit it any way you want. Um, uh, for example, a friend of ours um, uh, uh, was, was on uh, Penn & Teller's BS show and it's one of the few uh, Penn and Teller's BS shows that for years afterward, uh, publicly, they've admitted they felt like they didn't do a good job treating it with the respect that it deserves, and they missed the mark. And um, because what they ended up doing was they took all of the best lines that my friend said as the expert and had those words come out of Penn Jillette's mouth. And all of the stuff that, that played to the cheap pops, they had him say, um, and uh, they ended up facing a backlash on it. And luckily, my friend didn't ever really care one way or the other because when he posted himself, me, on Penn & Teller's BS show, he, he just made sure to cut out the best parts uh, where, uh, where everything was congruent with how he wanted to present himself. And so likewise, you could do a similar thing here. And, and, and I don't know if the, in terms of the audience for that, you know, you mentioned kind of size, Brian, um, in, in terms of people to maybe look at, right? Like maybe look at fashion or, or influencers. I mean, I think that's kind of what I, the influencer we market it, might be for. Can we, can we just narrow it down to wine bloggers? Yeah. I mean, that would be, I would go wide right after the wine bloggers and Instagrams, the people doing anything wine related on or there. Or beer for the bottle openers. Well, I, I, I suppose my impulse is if you want to play up, like here's a mysterious object, see if you can figure out what it is. Um, I, I would, I would, I would zag instead. I understand, uh, and you wouldn't be, I, I don't think it's a wrong call to zig. I, I, I suspect more interesting answers would come from top uh, 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 cartoonists or, or, well, or comedians I, or what have you. I'm thinking the goal is to sell them. And, I, and I'm, I think about like people who are really into, like you sell the magicians and you sell magic paraphernalia. You, you sell the people who are into games and hobbies and stuff. That is your audience. So you go right after you use your shows, your things to sort of say, hey, you like this, you like that. People who are into wine, they're, everybody's into the sort of the ceremony and the fetishization of it. And I would say, one, the spill, I spilled coffee workshop. I kept expecting to find coffee-related stuff, but it's like beer and wine. Yeah. My, my thing is like, if you give these, I would try as an example, like going to some you know people who blog about wine or whatever, give them to them to see if they talk about them because – People who drink wine, they love the process and the ceremony. So, oh, here's a special thing to use to open it. Here's a special thing to do that with. Correct. I would try that first. And I, I think you revealed a bias that I have because um, uh, there's two discussions to be had. If if what you want is to sell them and that's all you care about, then then I, I do think there's a lot of merit to going direct on there. However, um, I tend to, as I put it, put want to go the long way around where along the way you make sure that you build your own platform and your own voice. So down the road, whatever other thing, you don't have to start this whole process all over again and borrow other people's platform to get the word out. Um, uh, because uh, uh, if, if, if you just send out and sell it, yes, you will capture all of the emails of everybody who buys it, but now you only have that one platform. Whereas if you send them out and collect the most interesting parts and then make your supercut videos and then build How your own kind of, uh, uh, how do they, uh, how, fan base. How do they get the supercut video watched? How do they get people to see it? Um, well, uh, 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 first of all, it has to be made because because uh, uh, you you have to have story, right? Um, and the only way it gets made is by 
it's it's simply a numbers game. Uh, take take thirty people who you're going to hit up, and then send it, and then uh, take all the best moments of their like each person will speak for four to five minutes about them, and then and there'll be some amount of funny or interesting comments they will make, and then what you will do is you will take a collective hour and a half of just sort of mush mouth talk about it and condense it down into two minutes and 30 seconds of nine nine youtube comedians try to figure out what these are and then uh and then you and then once that gets literally any views um because again what you do is you then then you borrow another community you go to you know reddit's uh whiskey tribe or 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 you know food or wine or whatever it is and um uh and and hopefully if the content is uh, interesting and, and doesn't overstay its welcome, then you now have a formula that's infinitely replicable that you could keep on going like, um, you know, uh, uh, nine race car drivers try to figure out what these are, nine uh, uh, politicians try to figure out what these are, and so on. And um, uh, at that point, y yes, you're, you're taking, and again, I am very aware this is the long way around because ultimately what you want is to sell stuff, but if along the way what you want is your own vehicle, your own platform, your own fan base, then 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 it's worth the ex I, I find that it's worth the extra step so that when you eventually move beyond bottle openers and wine stoppers, now all of a sudden you're introducing your own unique invention or whatever, you don't have to repeat the process of borrowing a bunch of other people's platforms as well. I I hear Oh. Uh Andrew, we we I think we lost you there. Uh Oh, I, I forgot to tell you, I installed a disagree filter <laughs> while you were gone. <laughs> the moment anybody uh, does it, doesn't just blindly agree with me, they, they get cut off. Uh, let's, we're going to pause for just a minute. Sure. Oh, I forgot how good that, uh, <laughs> that, that Queen's Gambit video was. <laughs> A TVZ on his deep his deepfakes AI busted up. We have to reload it. Uh, let's see. Oh uh, man. Yeah, I wonder if his connection dropped. Is it maybe ours? No, I'm seeing no, it's not I'm seeing fine on ours. I no, because we lost his audio too, I'm sure. I think you're back. Oh, hello. Hello, Andrew. Oh, go give him a minute to turn the opal back on too. Hold everybody. We're in a holding pattern. We're pausing. He's he's working it out. He's looking at the screen. He's looking at the screen. He's he's clicking the buttons. He's trying to make sure he can hear. We can hear. Yep. Nope. Not yet. No. Not, not quite. Almost. I hear you. Oh. Oh. Th there we go. I think we heard you. Can you say something else? I can say lots of things. Yeah. Uh, keep talking for another thirty seconds or, or more for me. I'm gonna talk for thirty seconds. This is the first few seconds of few seconds of me talking. Ugh. Um. Let's let's have you switch over to Skype. Because you're coming in really choppy, and I'd like to see if that's also happening on Skype. Um, if you don't mind, so... I'm now talking to Skype. Uh, can, can, can you give us the alphabet, please? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Hearing my voice in my head is driving me insane. Oh, so <laughs> That's how you end up with crazy, <laughs> X crazy. Uh, talk, talk again. Did that? Did that get rid of the echo? Uh, Andrew, can you talk again for me? I uh, think I, I got... hear nothing. No. I don't hear you. Are you just mouthing at me to make fun of me? Oh, you can. Uh, oh, I see. Give me one sec. How about now? Can you still hear me? Yeah, I, th yes. I, I think he had us muted second. on Skype. Yeah. Uh, okay, can you talk again for me? Hi, I'm Andrew, and uh, man, this fiber connection's amazing. <laughs> okay, you're not you're not hearing yourself back, are you? 
No, I'm not. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, so you, um, you, you. So, uh, yeah, I think I had just finished up saying if you want to make sure you have a platform or whatever. And I think you began with, oh man, I'm probably not remembering right, but I thought it was like, I don't, I think it was some version of you're great and write about everything. Well, uh, that's just, maybe that's just right. the way I remember right. it. <laughs> Oh no, you cut no! out again. Oh no. Oh God, why? <sighs> you know, just it's there's not a lot of people living in Southern California. You know, there's just there's no there's no need for a good internet out there. Oh, we are still in a the internet is thing. cuckoo for chess. <laughs> Where they're wacko for chess. Wacko for chess, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a bummer. Join this call. Hello, is someone in this call? No. Not. Hmm. All right, everybody. We are still in a hold. We have to do this sometimes because people are accusing us of being deep fake bots. So we have to create the impression of That's extreme right. reality, as we call it. That's right. Ken it's Wharf a... Zero Four. <laughs> 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 Ever since the Super Bowl was won by, oh shit, I forgot which team won the Super Bowl. <laughs> I think it was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> the Lindsey Vaughn. Here, here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Aww. Oh, Oh, now it's just a oh the outbound. Call. Wait, the gamer music? Yes, it was. It's a box one. It wasn't a good game, but he won. Hmm. Dang. Okay, we'll give him a minute to kind of... Oh my gosh. All right. Well, I managed to, uh, with my very presence, <laughs> screw up. <laughs> Justin's moving to Austin. <laughs> Andrew's internet. Anyone else want something borked? <laughs> what? what? I have to go back and review, uh, just make sure I remember Raised by Wolves going into our discussion today. Oh, you oh you but, didn't but, go but, back and rewatch those episodes? Uh, no, I'll I'll just I'll just. Skip I am. That's, that's a good show. That's... It it really is. Uh, the uh, uh, no one else is a good show. Oh, what was the show you were talking about? That HBO show that I didn't like. Oh, uh, no, I uh uh, sorry. Uh, oh, the second one. Um, yeah. Oh, Westworld. I like Westworld more than you did. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's not great. I, th I, I thought we had mutual respect. Apparently, <laughs> it's a little bit one-sided. That's fine. <laughs> uh, no, I was talking about um, there's a character in season uh, uh, three, I think. Uh, uh, Jesse Pinkman has phone calls from. Do you, do you, do you oh, have... the, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. All right. Ah. You know, uh, the, the iPhone, Pff, the iPhone, you know, so they got rid of the, um, the thing where you force push on the keyboard to move the cursor around yeah and i and uh i, 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 I got used to okay. holding on to a thing for just a little bit longer I... but, and that's that's fine but that also meant that they got rid of push to select so you could no. push in a second time to select things and so on the messages app on the text messaging app on the iphone if you want to select text and you're going down. Oh, dude, the select, uh, it, the copy paste is just garbage. Well, it, it it closes the keyboard and it doesn't let you select things anymore. And I don't know why it's like that's the I don't select things up. I select things down. Yeah. Oh.
Hello? Hello? Oh. Yeah, I'm not getting any love for the opal right now. So. Okay, well, we'll just do this. Um, can you... Ro oh, there we go. Perfect. Busted. All right. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, all right. Well then, let's uh, let's bring it back. So, so uh, I think the last thing I had said is um, uh, my impulse is to go the long way around so that you end up with a platform outside of just uh, people who you've actively sold to. Um, and yeah. and I think I think Andrew had a follow up on that. So I, I think if that's within the wheelhouse of what somebody's trying to do, but I think that the challenge is, I know a guy who makes like coin gimmicks, amazing coin gimmicks. His coin gimmicks are like the best in the world. And uh, for those of you who know what a coin gimmick is, forget I ever said it. <laughs> He's He loves to spend time on his lathe and make these things, and that's what he loves to do. He's not a YouTuber. He's not a content creator. His goal isn't to try to spend several hours trying to figure out how to make these things. He shows up at conventions, and people love these things, and they tell other people, hey, you should buy these. To try to add on building a platform, and I get like – having your product can be your platform your product and your reputation can be that thing and to try to have to create content for other people it's not that easy and also you know i would it would be curious to see as an experiment and this could be a really neat thing would be for like one of us to try to build a thing without being able to use any of the built-in capital we have from already having an audience and already having channels and I even see this with, you know, we have a friend who's launched a YouTube channel, who's launched a show, and he got growth in the first week, and it's not growing. It's just flatlining. And, and I don't know why or what the reason is, but I see people with great content just die on the vine. And I think I'm, that's why I'm and hesitant to tell somebody who makes a product, you know. Well, and, and I, I, I think that they're I – th I think that's kind of where the – send this out to influencers goes. And I think that, it, that that's a middle ground, right? Like if you're just making your products, then you really don't have any external facing stuff. And if you're spending this time kind of, you know, going out and building content and also building this content platform on top of it, um, uh, then that, that, that might, that's, that's a whole, that's a second hill you, you've, you've decided to, to climb on top of it. And, and, and I, I, you know, for, for Nicholas, I don't know how much of this is like, we've got, this is a serious thing or this is, you know, we're making products and, you know, we're, we're having a good time. Um, but I think that that also uh, should, should uh, influence on the balance between those two. I think, I think Andrew brings up an exceptional point where um, what's obvious to me uh, uh, maybe is not uh, an important or, or even a fun part for other people, the content creation, the platform having, and all that stuff. In which case, here's something I would highly recommend, is what people want most, um, I mean, actually, that might be too universal a setup. Uh, what I suspect a lot of people really want when they spend money on things is to feel like they are buying from within. And so, all of which is to say, here's another thing you could do. Same thing I said about everything. You don't have to do the collection video, but what you can do is send out send out 30 units to uh, high value, uh, 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 back to what Andrew was saying, people within the wine community, within you know the beer community or whatever, and say, I make these. They're very, very good. I'm, I would like to offer for you. It'll be built by me. It'll be powered by all of my expertise and everything. Please play with this, and if you like it, I would like you and your community to figure out a completely unique color scheme, and I will do a limited run of blank of these that will be branded. Mm. I'll put your brand on it. A and, branding and, code and deal. Your okay. deal will be these are yours powered by name of my thing. Now, all of a sudden, they're the ones selling directly to their tribe and they already have the established thing. Mm. You are the, the benchmark of credibility behind it. Uh, and you're the one that, that is, that is powering everything. Um, uh, I think, and, I think that's, that's a really solid uh, way, you know, if you're able to get like an engraver or, or, you know, do custom colors, whatever. Like, I think, I think you well, they, probably would not, well, I think doing a branding thing or a commercial service thing is is not out of the cards. And what they can do, what he can do with these, these are resin blocks, is he can put all kinds of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. So if somebody right. likes flower petals or something like that, you could 
design. I mean, know, even with, uh, go, go, go to a famous uh, person who's always doing stuff with Legos or whatever. Take those single block Legos and, and just, just drop that in the resin. Yeah. And then you can actually see the Lego blocks suspended in there. And I think it's a, it's a very good, like, we're, we're looking at some of the images and, uh, you know, it, it seems like they're able to make a lot of different things, pens and like, with an ice cream scoop. And, and that gives you a lot of versatility, right? Where it's not just, okay, we're making an acrylic thing in the mold, but we're also making a utility. We're making something that has, has some utility value for for whoever it is. Like, I think that there's a non-zero element to that, even when there's a branding or another platform. Oh, that's patched. fascinating. Uh, Miravina in the chat says, my, my hubby would love D&D dice in one of those products. That's the thing you could literally do is reach out to a popular, there, there's a whole strata of D&D podcasts and YouTube channels or whatever, and say, here's what I'm going to do. I take these D&D dice and I put them in a blender and I pull out all the best looking pieces and they go in um, uh, uh, from what I've read, you know, seen of your show or whatever, you love this color scheme. Here's something in your color scheme, literally made of D and D dice. I will only do 100 of these. They will be a premium item. Here are the margins that I'm baking in for you and your voice in your tribe. And mm. here's how much I charge for each of them. What, once you break apart the sales process, like ultimately how often do I need a wine stopper? I don't know. I'll take a, I'll take an old a phone book and cram it in there who cares right mm -hmm. or, or or a bottle opener i'll hit, hit it on the side of a table <laughs> like 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 functionally they don't matter but but tribally they matter very very much so if you can build if you can help them co-build a story of something truly unique then all of a sudden it short circuits the part uh, the the utility part of the consumer's brain all of a sudden they're not buying thinking, well, how often do I open a beer, you know? Instead, they're thinking about what tribe do I identify with? How special is this item? How cool will it be to pull it out and show it and have something truly novel on there? And how much will I love the experience of opening it? Um, that's part of the reason, you know, over at Scam Stuff, we, we try to make as many things as numbered as possible and to have tokens with them that, that live outside of, of the item itself. Mm. And I think that that if you don't mind co-branding with a bunch of people and just be the powered by part then and and make make it clear like this is yours this is your thing it's a limited run though only so many units i think that would do really really well i think that's a good idea i would say maybe watch out for the dnd dice space because i think that's a very saturated market uh like oh, there are tons wait, of wait. people who make dnd dice oh no 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 made out of destroyed dnd dice like the the idea is it's a bottle uh, opener, but uh, imagine it clear and you can see pieces of D twenties inside. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were describing blended. making dice. No, you, you you you. But I I do agree. It is a saturated space as as is you know like playing cards is getting a little bit uh, crowded. Um, but 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 the idea of taking a thing and building it into another thing, I think would do would oh, would would be yeah. well beloved. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's that's interesting. And Andrew, what what are you? I think that you know the thing. I, if I were in his business, I want I want people to think if I need to give a gift, then I'm just going to give one of these. Know that like, oh, I'll just order from there and give it as a gift, and think about that because like it's one one a person buys one from you once, that's all they ever need. But if they know, oh, I can always send them this really cool collectible whatever kind of thing. Then it makes it easier because then you get somebody buying 10 of them from you at a time. And I think that's a thing to really focus on is lean into the idea. When people get it, let them think, oh, yes, I can give this as a gift to somebody else. You know, you might even put in like uh, a calendar of like, you know, hey, uh, here's as many like a one card postcard size calendar. When you have to give gifts to people, think about this or something. Mm. Just something to just really put that in people's heads to the idea that it's not a one-off relationship that, that they can, you can be this go-to source for that. I get, or, uh, oh, no, no, okay, go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. What, what, and, and, like, oh, oh, sorry, both of us had ideas. Go ahead, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, like, like I have, like whenever one of my books hits like a record-breaking sales thing, whatever, my publisher sends me the book mounted inside of a case or I get these metal sheets there's some dude who gets that business. There's some dude who gets paid by them to go make these specialty sort of things sent to me. And then uh, I get gift baskets, you know, like an announce stuff. And so they've got on speed dial, this is who we order from to give away these gifts. So think and about that. Keep in mind, if somebody pays, let's say there's a crazy premium, super special edition, 
you know, a famous D and D podcast, uh, you know, with, you, you end up somehow spending $60 on a wine stopper and a bottle opener. Um, but now you're on the list and, uh, around holiday time, you get to say, uh, Hey, it's me, the guy that made your favorite bottle opener and wine stopper. I have a new, that's, you know, you bought in because of the tribal branding of this one thing and the identity of watching this one show. But I made this thing that's a more general story that will approach to more people. Uh, but but it, but it, too, is a limited run, only it's limited to 2,000 instead of, you know, 200. Um, and I would... I, I, one thing I wonder about, and this, this might be taking us a little bit off, off on the side here, but, um, you know, I, I think we're assuming, I, I think we're coming from a place where we're, we're as, assuming Nicholas can make, you know, hundreds or thousands of these things and 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 if so then then i think these are good ideas i i almost wonder if there's another play in terms of um going a little more custom and a little more high end right taking some of these ideas and saying hey send me like if we're taking if we're talking about like the broken up D D dice thing right like you know proof of, you know figure out your proof of concept and figure out how a process on how to make that and then s sell that as a service say hey for a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, whatever. We'll, I'll send you a label. Send me your dice. I'll break them up and I'll put them in a bottle opener or whatever. Like I, I almost wonder if going custom and lower volume um, at a higher, more premium price is a way to go and a way to stand out. Because I think I do think that there's a possibility that you know uh, the acrylic stuff that 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 might be enough of a commodity where you might just be uh able to be priced out versus another company that just makes this just does does this you know uh at, at a huge mass scale on i would say a thing on, on the publicity stunt side you could do things like make a twenty thousand dollar one there's something special about it it's got mammoth dna in there or something create like you know the original grape stock dna or yeast or Create, think about creating something. You can put anything in that resin so you can tell a story or make something really Brian to Brian storytelling side of it. You can make a thing that has a special story to it. Mm -hmm. And that could be a PR thing because it's like, oh, you, you know, how about this gift? Because like every holiday season here, like you could buy this $10,000 such and such purse. And it's a, the thing they made that was just to get a press release, just to say, we offer this really crazy item. So if you could think of like a really, really, really crazy, we got ghosts captured in here, you know, whatever, <laughs> right. you know, like, like do a, just something cool about it. It's a story. It's a story to talk about. Uh, there's also value to once somebody hears a very large number studies show, they can't unhear it and ra completely irrationally. It affects how they, they gauge the price on a thing. Like if I hear a story about like, here is, uh, do you know what the most expensive uh, bottle opener in all of history? It sold at Sotheby's for $2.5 million and it had this story behind it. Uh, the, first, the, the most expensive mass marketed one was $10,000 and blah, 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 blah. None of those stories have anything to do with this very reasonable Night Attack branded bottle opener that's only $49.95. Would you like to buy one? And you can't unhear that $2.5 million, that $200,000 number uh, and then, uh, and then it affects how you feel about spending 50 bucks. And, you know, on the story side too, is that if there is like a legit neat thing about like you're putting, again, these are, these are the dumb ideas. You'll have better ideas. Put in a trilobite fossil or an arrowhead or something in there. It's a talking point. It's like, oh yeah, check out this. Oh, it's cool. This is a blah, 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 blah inside of here. Da, da, da. It turns out this is the story on this, you know? Oh, interesting. Now we have something to talk about. And there's people love people love to you, you know love to have a story that you can sell them a story they can tell make it their own if if there's uh i don't know a local conservation site or a, a natural area where they have a gift shop see if you can take some pine needles and put some resin and say hey can i can hey you want to you want some shelf space you want something to sell and we can make a deal like it, you know, it, it, see what's in your backyard I, I can, or what the things that you're passionate about. I can even picture stuff that sounds gross and weird to say out loud, but I think might actually move. Like uh, YouTube has some very weird, passionate uh, um, fan base communities. Uh, uh, somebody might go to a nurse and have their finger pricked and take a bit of blood and send a bit of blood and it'll be mixed in with the batch. And somewhere in there huh. is 
your favorite YouTubers, literal DNA in there. And, and, you know, that would be a publicity stunt for uh, sure. Exactly. Right. I mean, it's like, it's like, there's no, um, uh, once, once you divorce what you're selling from the actual function of a thing, a lot more becomes possible because once we're not saying, man, bottles, they're so hard to open. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how to open them. We <laughs> figured it out. It's only $50. Like that would be insane. Nobody would do that. But, um, tapping into a unique story and in partnership with someone, uh, I, th I think would be really, really good. Yeah. Sounds cool. Uh, any books or any advice anybody have out there? Uh, what was the, uh, we, we talk a, a lot about the book alchemy, uh, w that I think, I think we've been circling around a lot, a lot of the ideas in there. Uh, Rory, I forget the rest of his Sutherland. Name. Sutherland. Yeah. Um, uh, alchemy talks about all the counterintuitive ways where by, by in time making a trip longer, you can create an experience that feels shorter. And that's, that's, uh, and, and you could do it without spending billions of dollars in infrastructure that requires taxpayer and eminent domain and all that stuff. Um, I, I think, I think really that's what we're talking about is taking a commodity item and figuring out how to make it special yeah. with a little bit of alchemy. You know, uh, especially to kind of to, to co-sign what you were saying, Brian is, is I've, I've been watching a lot of shark tank, uh, lately. And the thing that they always, you know, harp on is like, okay, well, what about your product or service or whatever is proprietary? What is the thing that only you can do, whether you're protected by a patent or you have a trade secret or X, Y, or Z. And, you know, I think acrylic goods on their own are a certain commodity to a certain point. I mean, you can hand do the colors and, and give it a sort of editorial touch, but look for ways to make it feel more premium or where you, you are, uh, you know, making it your own, your own secret sauce that, can't just be replicated for 10 cents with uh, uh, in a big factory where they have well and, and th think about every t-shirt you've ever bought at every concert ever the purpose of a t-shirt is to cover your bare chest and that is nobody advertises it as such instead it represents i was there for that concert in which case you pay 30 to 80 dollars for it or it represents i am part of this tribe in which case you spend 25 to 30 dollars or if it represents I just want my shirt covered or my chest covered, in which case it was free because T-shirts rain from the skies. So it's like, uh, you know, think about the story you want to tell. I, I'll double down on alchemy as a book because it is there are there are things that are obvious that we don't put labels on them because we assume they're obvious and we find out that they're not obvious. And there are things that are counterintuitive that makes sense once you stand in the right point of view to look at something. And I think this book is filled with a lot of examples of that. And I think so much of, so much of like understanding today is sort of, and I'd also maybe do kind of a recommendation to Marshall McLuhan, who in the 20th century wrote some really interesting books and essays about culture and the technology age that we lived in that were just neat ways to sort of frame things and understand stuff because sometimes you just have to step to the side and you look at stuff like you know we think if we talk about news and entertainment but news is entertainment the way we consume news it's purely an entertainment product the way they choose stories the way things are done is done from that point of view and people in news hate to be told this but it is it makes its money the same way it's driven the same way and once you see that and you look at how were catered to that way. Then you look at it differently. Then you understand too, like, you know, uh, Brian's talked a lot about Ryan Holiday, who understood how do you get a story to get built? You know, how do you build a story to get it from a smaller outlet to a bigger outlet? How do you, how do you turn, how do you create something out of nothing? You know, and there's just a lot of examples out there when you start to think about like, you know, in public, you know, public relations, what do you do if people are criticizing you about a thing? Sometimes the best thing is to say nothing because the moment you respond, it becomes a story, which also shows you if you want a thing to be a story, criticize something else, attack something else, or attach yourself to something else. And then all of a sudden it gets built up. And you look at, you go look on any news site and you look at the number of just complete BS stories. You're like, you know, so and so and his wife, you know, spent such and such to buy this house in this area or like, you know, look how much they spent on redoing their pool or they get this, the story behind the dog they got. You're like, where are these stories come from? Well, they're manufactured by PR people. You know, right. and so much of our news comes from press, press releases and stuff and stories fed. 
on all sides, politics and everything. It's once you look through that lens, everything starts to change. Yeah, like uh, in for example, uh, let let's say we wanted to start promoting um, on television the Weird Things podcast. Uh, all we have to do, the algorithm is very very simple: figure out a news item, figure out who almost certainly is looking to book an expert, no matter how tangential, to fill about three minutes of a cable news show. Say, hey, I'm enough of an expert; I belong on there. All you have to do is introduce me as co-host of the weird things podcast and then we could get booked on that stuff all day long and uh and, and uh, what we're doing is on the small world we're solving the problem for some overworked you know 29 year old uh, uh booking person but in the big world what we're doing is making sure to put the weird things brand in front of people and that kind of thing you know we could call up the local news agency and said hey uh uh bonnie bonina has invited the world famous weird things team and has offered them ten thousand dollars if they can get rid of a ghost in her house in Torchwood Street. Right. Uh, and then, and then, all caps. And they failed. Like now, we've got a story. Like, wait, who are these jokers? who were charged ten thousand yeah. dollars, and they couldn't even get it. You know. So. Well, the idea is we get the news. Do you want to come show up? They're going to do like a real ghost, but and come up with a crazy right. story. Like, oh, there's been, oh, there's been lights, you know, out over some preserve behind your house or whatever. People like, you know, we could you create a story. You give us create a visual element that a news crew could show up and see an event from the come happen. Make a few calls. And then you'll hear too, like, well, could you do it Tuesday? Oh yeah, we'll do it Tuesday. Cause they know like that's often a thing is you're surprised. Like, oh, Tuesday, we're going to think, ah, oh, too bad. Cause we're doing a thing Tuesday. If it was going to happen Wednesday, oh, it could happen Wednesday. Right. You know, and then, right. so there's so many ways. Once you see that, how you can, you know, you can craft that and create a story because it's entertainment. It's all entertainment. Yeah. By the way, my, cool. pick, my pick is alchemy again. <laughs> like I mean, yeah, we can alchemy. keep making that a perennial favorite. <laughs> Alchemy. Uh, Bryce, you double down on that, or yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say go for alchemy. Yeah, and then you'll read it. <laughs> they got me. This is how they get me. You write a book called <laughs> Alchemy and <laughs> convince three people to 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 read it. In the first one, read it. I, I, have you read it, Bryce? No, I I have not. I think you would like it because I think that it is a. Sometimes there are things we can't put our finger on it. And you're like, no, this doesn't make sense. This seems more right than that or whatever. And he does a really good job of that. I think you would mm. like it because I think you can be a pretty intuitive person. And I think that you probably would enjoy it. Cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll check. In fact, I will buy that uh, right now. Over here. Gentlemen, it's been after. Ooh, that's real magic. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> 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 yeah, you get the Tom Cruise. I just, I just want, I want that GIF in isolation with the headline: "This magician was able to get his own show on A and E." Yeah, that deep fake. That was the thing. At first, somebody said, "I'm like, man, that's a, it's a really horrible French drop." Like <laughs> Tom Cruise would like know. Like, oh. <laughs> Uh, All right, everybody, uh, we are okay. going to yep, go offline. We will be back uh, at, uh, in what, two and a half hours? Oh, my goodness. With, yeah, uh, look at all this time. Kuhan. Kuhan's going to be joining us on Cord Killers. I'm actually really excited about that. That'll yeah. be fun. His, uh, um, he does a trivia stream, like a like a bar trivia thing online. He hosts it with a, a buddy of his. Oh, right and on. it's great. It's a cool thing. Dude, very cool. He's, he's great. He's going to be great on Cord Killers. So that's coming up at Andrew Main. Uh, check out uh, the new... Oh, dude, that almost looked down so really great <laughs> i know i've got this delay so on my end whoa that looks good <laughs> oh that looked great yeah, whoa yeah, yeah. So, oh. is, 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 is that a full-on real muscle pass i've never gotten no. that down okay because i, oh, I, I, I did hurt like crazy yeah yeah you you you, let, you have to kind of break your 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 palms <laughs> yeah oh that was good <laughs> Yay! Hey! All right, all right, all right. Now we have to get off. Check him out. Go Andrew. out on a win. Black Coral. Thank Check you out for Black watching Coral. Stupid thing. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Bye. Bye.